Okay, Roger once again, Mud Fossil University today talking about energy and electrons and electronic transitions and so forth. Pr primarily, it involves, the way I'm going to uh, relate this to you is transition metals, okay, because that's the most, it's the easiest way for you to understand what's going on here. Now, Tesla was the most intelligent of anybody ever in history about the nature of of um, matter and he made the statement that everything is vibration and I totally agree with that now I don't just say oh yeah he's right and I'm gonna take up my whole life and go on like that which they did with Einstein and Einstein was completely wrong E equals MC squared means nothing at all because he said that light has no mass if light had no mass it means it has no energy C squared is, is irrelevant so we all know energy, light has energy, it's obvious. So Einstein was very, very, very wrong about what he, and then he said I, light is sometimes a particle or sometimes not a particle and sometimes it's nothing, sometimes it's something. There is no such thing as, as a electronic motion through and no ether, none of that stuff, which is totally wrong. There is, and it's all electrons leaving the sun, floating towards earth, and then being sucked to earth by the magnetic properties of matter. Now, I'm going to start out by saying all elect everything's electronic. Everything is a, a, a electronic, really. It's a positives and negatives. And there is no neutrals. So get that right out of your head. <laughs> there is no neutrals. Nobody's ever seen a neutron rolling around on the floor, so forget that. That's just They just threw that in here because they couldn't make up for the amount of mass. And I can. Now, so I can deal with these three things. And I'm not even sure this exists as, as a single entity. I think this and this exist as single entities. A complete negative particle, which is an electron, I'm going to call it, and they call that in the past, and they're 1,800 times smaller than a single, what they used to call a neutron, which we don't, there's, there is none, and then a, a, a proton. So, in, in essence, this particle is like 3,600 times smaller than the nuclear particle. And the nuclear particle consists of a positive and a negative. And the negative exceeds the positive just by a hair. And what that means is that because there's a positive here, it will try to attract negatives. Because there is a negative here that exceeds the positive, the negative will reach a point where it can no longer get close to here. So everything attracts each other, because this will attract this, they attract each other, but they, would own, they, they have limits to where they can respond to each other. They don't necessarily click together. That's just a fact. That's what quantum is. And the more of these... The different, the more of these will will have more of these, and the more of these having more of these will make them come into what they call a pattern, an orbital. So orbitals will be at quantum distances because just exactly a certain amount will keep this away due to the size and the excess negativity of the center particle. So positives, eh, they're they're just core. They let's take let's just this is not forget this forget that. The core is always positive and negative. There is no positive by it exists by itself. And there is no neutral that exists by itself. There is negatives that exist by themselves, and there is nuclear particles which are negative positives. Okay, so now that we understand the particles, I'm saying there's a, this type of particle, this type of particle. This is in the nucleus, this surrounds the nucleus, and also these are in the entire universe is filled with these because they, they literally spit out of a, 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 a solar masses. They're all over, they're everywhere. It's aether, it's ether. That's what, it, it, what starts with an A. And that's what, um, I, not Einstein, he was, again, Einstein was not you know I don't have nothing against him, but he just wasn't right. Now Tesla, I have everything for him, and he was maligned. So I guess I do have something against Einstein. All right, so let's go on from there. The transition metal bounce. That's what you see as colors. Transition metal bounce, and the reason is is that they have a little 
they have holes inside the orbitals where the electron can bounce down and then bounce back out as light. That's all it is. Now, magnetism is electron pooling. It, 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 it pools at the poles. So if you take a magnet and you drag it across a piece of metal, you'll push all those electrons and they'll stay down there if it's the right kind of metal, if a, a certain magnet, a, a type of iron and so forth and steel. You can push the electrons right down with a magnet. We did it all the time where I worked. And you had to magnetize the screwdrivers. So you take a bar magnet, you go zip, zip, and then this end is now magnetic. Well, both ends are magnetic, but your handle's up there. <laughs> so you touch the magnet, and then you can screw them in. And that's the way it works. That's, and then you're pushing the electrons. You're just pushing them, and they are pooling in that transition metal where it has all the holes that are, are sitting there waiting to bounce. Well, if you do it in certain types of metals, you can push them down, they'll stick. That's magnetism. Okay, this is um, the Aurora Borealis, which is, we call it the Northern Lights. And you could see the reds on the top layer, and then it starts getting into the greens and so forth. And um, there's there's a, this is the interaction between particles coming down fast, being sucked to the earth by the magnetism of the earth, that positive-negative suction coming down, and as those particles interact with the molecules that are in the air, they do that bounce and give off the little frequencies of light, which I'm going to show you in a second by a, an experiment done by Physics Girl, which is, she's fabulous. Now. What you're seeing here, you see there's going to be different different areas in the, the, the surface of the Earth which, which um, create different magnetic lines of flux. That's what these are called. Now, the, the core of the Earth is not a perfect, a perfect set of, of wires like a, a motor is, which creates a, a fairly consistent pattern. But these sort of snake here and there because the, the pattern of the, the magnetic lines of the Earth is not, is not structurally equal. So that's really what you're seeing. And these will happen literally only at the poles because that's where the strongest magnetism is. Just like any bar magnet, you have poles and that's where your, your, your strength really is. So as the light comes in, it is accelerated so much here that it interacts and bumps these molecules up. In the other parts of the Earth, it's not it's so accelerated because the, the flux lines sort of go around the Earth instead of, boom, straight down into the Earth. And that's what we're picking up is to suck me down to the Earth ones. The other ones are so, ah, you're up on the outside, come on in and then just drift on down to here. Well, the drifting down gives you the normal heat and light that we have, but the sucking down forces them into here. And I believe that that's why plants grow so well in the northern uh, hemisphere, in the Arctic areas during the summer. Um, they have light, and, and because that light is coming in, forced into them, that's why they grow, not because it's, it's a long day. Okay, this is a uh, physics girl, and she is fabulous. And what I'm going to do is um, show you what she has done here, her experiment. And uh, sh what she is showing is that, that magnetism pulls to the Earth. That's literally what she's showing in this experiment, exactly demonstrating what I'm talking about, where it, 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 it pulls to the poles of the Earth so, so hard that it emits light. And she's shown that it emits light from the other regions in the, the magnetic lines of flux. But the poles are what really gives you the light. And on Earth, that's the only place where we have enough pull to show the magnetic uh, interaction with, with the particles coming to Earth. Now, watch what happens here. The first thing is she has a plate here, and she's dropping fluid on here. And it's, there's not going to be any real big interaction because there's no magnet under there. Then she's going to do it with one inch under there, and you're going to see some interaction. Then she's going to do it right up against the plate, and boom, at that time it will suck that stuff down so hard it'll shoot out um, the same thing as we show as the Aurora Borealis. So here it goes. 
All right, now I'm just going to explain. Boom, see that hits not, uh, nothing. So now we got one inch below. So we're starting to get some colors, you see? Then when she puts it to the, to, right to the plate, you're going to see a whole different situation. Right now it's one inch below. Here we go, direct on, bam. Now, I'm going to stop this one second. You watch, I'm going to tell you what to look for. This is the poles. This is where you're going to see the brightness shooting out of there, the white lights. You're going to have reds and greens and blues and all that because those are the other frequencies. The white is an intense pushback. The others are sort of, those are the flux lines. This is where they really push in, on the poles. So watch this carefully. All right, here we go. Boom. You see, see, see the light? And it'll be over here. See the different colors here? They're not as rich. On Earth, you don't get these. You get these colors up here, as we saw, the reds and the greens and so forth, because our Earth does not have this kind of intensity. I mean, it has a lot more intensity, but not in this compact form. Watch, watch it do this. Watch when she hits it. Look at this. Boom! Look at the look at it light up. I hope you can see that on there. She loves to see it so good. Anyway, that is the story, and 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 she just, showed, as far as I'm concerned, that exactly demonstrates the aurora borealis and it demonstrates everything I have to say and and the earth is round so don't start coming oh this is impossible because the earth is flat and this is, drives me nuts and I'm sorry I have to keep saying this but it really it upsets me every time I make a video because every single thing I say oh there's no comets there's no space this is wrong because this is everything's flat so don't please don't go there Okay, that's, I guess that's about where I'm going to stop. I can go through a lot more. I got so much on this. I mean, hours and hours of this. But go on to, here, look. Here's, here's what the uh, website, uh, the uh, YouTube is. It's uh, Mud Fossils University. Mud Fossil University. And uh, it's on YouTube. It's free. There's nothing. You can go up here, and if you don't like it, you just leave. <laughs> now, this here is, uh, well, this is about Tesla's ether and, uh, sonoluminescence and uh, free energy and Harvard recreated our light research. You look up, you watch, you see exactly what they did, exactly what we did, identical. And we, I sent this to them, and it's just interesting that they they did this after we did ours. The same thing happened with the mud DNA. We sent this to Harvard and, and uh, Max Planck several years ago, and then a year later, or so they came out giggling about how they could find DNA in mud. Now this is sonoluminescence explained. Uh, Anti-gravity. This is the one you want to look at. Gravity and anti-gravity revealed at MFU. Anti-gravity is nothing more than sucking electrons away so fast that they don't get replaced. And that's what happens when you have those magnetic cold uh, levitations. At an exact temperature, there is so much electron flowing out which is, that's all cold is, is just sucking electrons out of something, and heat is pushing electrons into something. That is all it is. That is all it is. And when you suck them out so fast, they, they levitate. They go right off the ground, and they come up to a, a certain quantum distance away, which is their quantum distance that it, it is assigned to that particular type of material. That's all it is. So go up here and look at this. I mean, and, and Hutchinson, he did this years ago. And then this is our light research. That's accelerated light. That's light accelerated. And, and I'm showing all of this stuff over and over and over and over and over. There's so much on here, it's just it's embarrassing now. So go up here and look. Mud Fossil University on YouTube. That's, that's the only place. Real, I'm telling you right now. And this is one fact that I can tell you that is a fact beyond denial. This is the only place you will find truth. The only place in the world right now that you will find truth. It's my last word.